welcome to part two of our adventures to try and discover the wonders of Italy on Piano Azura. In part one we'd flown to Valletta in Malta where we reacquainted ourselves with this brilliant ship before watching the fireworks and sailing north into the Mediterranean. We then had a very lazy sea day but had enjoyed some wonderful dining in the evening which was celebration night on board. So it was now day three and we had arrived in the Italian port of Vespasia and to get our immersion into the Italian culture we had put our trust in P&O and booked one of their excursions. An early breakfast and we watched the ship moor up in the port of Vespasia. We disembarked and were directed to our waiting coach. So where are we going, Si? Well, we're doing the Pisa and Florence on your own excursion. It's been a bit chaotic getting off so far. Apparently, first of all, stickers are not even So I'm sure it'll be fine. Just we'll have a good time. We'll have a weird day. <laughs> See you later. Greeted by our guide Maria, we were soon speeding off towards Pisa, and after one hour, we were parked in a large coach park and began following Maria into the city, who was holding aloft a placard indicating our coach number. It was a 15 minute walk in blistering heat into Pisa, passing by stores and cellars. Lots of tours were making their way as we were, and in one amusing and somewhat alarming moment, one of the other guys began shouting and pointing to people sat on a bench, saying they were pickpockets. The people sat on the bench seemed unflustered and simply sat there laughing at us. Pisa is a walled city, and tourists enter through the city wall gate to view what we've all come for, the magnificent cathedral, and of course the leaning tower. And boy does it lean. Quite a sight, but a more fun sight is the hordes of tourists striking poses to keep the tower from toppling. Be rude not to, I suppose. Strike a pose, Neddy. We had one hour in Pisa to explore on our own. We snapped loads of pics of the tower and then headed down into the city past shops and cafes. And hang on, a supermarket? Can't resist a supermarket. And in this blistering 37 degree heat, we just had to load up our backpacks with bottles of drink, bags of crisps, and lots and lots of sweets, of course. Mooching around Pisa was a delight. Souvenirs brought, we visited a beautiful church and the main city square, where a cute dog was taking a shower in one of the fountains. We really do need to cool down. It's 30 plus degrees, maybe 35, 36, how's the gelato? Oh, that's amazing. It's actually, it's actually melting really quickly, um, but I went for the cherry flavour and it's absolutely out of this world. Yum, 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 Yay. enjoy. This was a delicious gelato, but you had to eat it quick or it would end up down your arm, or even worse, on the floor. This time in Pisa had flown past, and before long we were walking back to our coach. Back on board we rehydrated and sped across the mountains towards Florence. After a further hour and a quarter, we arrived in Florence. The coach parked outside the main city area. Our guide Maria then led the group on another 15 minute walk into the city centre. The heat in Florence was even more oppressive, edging at times close to 40 degrees. Our guide led us to the Piazza Santa Croce. This was to be our meeting point three and a half hours later on. But randomly, before we were dispersed, she dragged us into a jeweler's and we had to endure an unexpected five minutes of sales pitch from the staff within. Maria said P&O insisted she did this. We don't know if this is true, but we endured it and soon dispersed into this magnificent and beautiful city. The two main attractions are the marvel that is Cathedral del Duomo and Michelangelo's David. It quickly became clear these are tourist traps with tickets needing to be booked in advance if you don't want to wait in exceptionally long queues. Cooks explore, so that's exactly what we decided to do, and we wandered through the maze of narrow streets and took in parts of the city that weren't on the tourist map provided. Among the highlights was the leather market, a long street that is partly covered and filled with market traders selling incredible leather goods. But our favourite was the central market with its upper floor street food court. This was some place and quite a find. It was recommended by Time Out magazine as a must-do for foodies. That's enough to send us there then. It did not disappoint. There was so much interesting food to choose from. So what have you got there, Si? So where are we, Si? Well, we're in central Florence. We're in the central market in Florence. It's an amazing place. There's all the stalls and everything downstairs. Great leather market. Here is a street food court. An amazing selection of foods. We've got to have some bacon fries with cheese on the floor and a tasty to see in the beer to wash it down. Absolutely love this place. What a place. So, what you got for now? I've got the, for the authentic margarita pizza. Ooh, it looks marvelous. When in Italy, we've got the dinner. It looks great. Ooh, I love that. Ooh. 
The food was simply delicious and we watched the pizza being lovingly prepared and when it arrived it lasted only a few minutes and was washed down by fine local beer. What a delight this was and in this city of art and culture we had found culture just it wasn't renaissance art and architecture but was more of a stuff your face and drink beer culture. Ok we had better do something a bit more highbrow and a beautiful church is always good for the soul so we headed into the church of Santa Maria Novella. This cost seven euros fifty to enter and was beyond beautiful inside. Candles lit for lost loved ones, we began exploring this gorgeous church complex. And wow, the frescoes and restored works of art were breathtaking. Much of this artwork dates from the 14th and 16th centuries and is in amazing condition and clearly lovingly cared for. It really was stunning and it would have been easy to spend a couple of hours in here just admiring the beauty all around you. It was a place with a peaceful atmosphere and somewhere where you could just sit and ponder. We left and again made our way around the winding streets of this medieval city. We made our way along the river bag towards the medieval Ponte Vecchio bridge, which still has its shops built onto the bridge structure. All these shops are jewellers, strangely enough. We were soon realising that Florence is a city that quickly drains your bank account. Time was slipping past and we had at this stage given up on seeing statues of naked men, but right on cue we found ourselves at the piazza outside the Palazzo Vecchio. More than enough marble nudity for one day in any case. We made it back to our meeting point just in time for a cold drink in a nice little cafe. So guys, how has your trip to Florence been? We've come to the end of our trip to Florence and it's really been hot hasn't it? Gosh, it's been 37 degrees today and my fan has been a lifesaver for me but it's finally died. It's a beautiful city, I mean just the architecture and the vibe, it's very busy, it's also quite expensive as well. Yeah, uh, and gone all... through quite a few pennies today haven't we? Yeah, there's a lot to do, a lot to see. We didn't get to see half of the things that you should see, we didn't see the Michelangelo's baby. No. And we didn't manage to get inside the Duomo. The we ran out of time, didn't we? We just ran out of time, but we did yeah. find a very, very good food market. <sighs> and that was amazing. That was amazing. amazing, yeah. If you're a foodie, the Central Market in Florence Definitely a place to go, it's isn't a place it? place to go. <laughs> really, really good. Anyway, we're just waiting for our guide to head us back to the bus and then we're head off back to the ship. We walked a further 15 minutes back to the coach and soon we were on the two hour trip back to La Spezia and back aboard Azura. Back aboard, we showered and changed before grabbing a bite from the buffet, then a wander around the ship, some live music before retiring to our favourite planet bar, a glass of wine and a cocktail whilst enjoying some tunes from a classy pianist. Our introduction to Italy had been all we'd hoped for. It had been a brilliant day, if a little exhausting, and tomorrow we were docking in the port of Calvi on the island of Corsica. This wasn't the originally planned stop and was a bit of an unknown for us. All we did know was that it was a tender port, so why not join us in the next video in this series to see what surprises lay in store for us in this paradise home to millionaires and legionnaires. Thanks for watching. Hello, if you like our channel and you want to see more of us exploring and explore with us, please like and subscribe, it means so much to us.